The Curtis Wright XP-55 Ascender was one of the boldest American fighter experiments of the Second World War. It emerged from the 1939 United States Army Air Corps requirement, R-40C, which encouraged radical configurations to improve speed, maneuverability, firepower, and pilot visibility. Engineer Donovan Berlin and the Curtis Wright team proposed the Model 24, a canard pusher aircraft with swept wings, a rear-mounted engine, and twin fins at the wingtips. Wind tunnel testing quickly exposed serious problems. More than 600 runs showed instability in pitch, roll, and yaw. Despite negative conclusions, Berlin believed that a real aircraft with pilot feedback could solve issues the model could not. Curtis funded a full-scale flying testbed, the CW-24B, with a steel tube fuselage, fabric skin, wooden wing, fixed tricycle landing gear, and a 275 horsepower Manasco engine. It first flew in December 1941. Over 169 flights, engineers modified wingtips, vertical surfaces, and control linkages until the airplane reached acceptable stability. NACA then tested it again in full-scale tunnels. On the 10th of July 1942, the Army ordered three prototypes, designated XP-55. The intended Pratt & Whitney X-900 engine never materialized, forcing a switch to the Allison V-710. Early armament plans called for two 20mm cannon and two 50 caliber machine guns. Weight reductions later eliminated the cannon. A propeller jettison system protected the pilot during bailout, critical in a rear propeller layout. The first XP-55 flew on 9th of July, 1943. Takeoff runs proved long, so engineers enlarged the nose elevator and linked ailerons to flaps to boost lift. On the 15th of November, 1943, the prototype entered a stall, inverted, and descended uncontrollably. Test pilot Harvey Gray survived, but the aircraft was destroyed. Investigators recommended greater wing area and more nose elevator travel. The second prototype flew in January 1944 with minor control changes and strict stall limits. The third prototype, flying in April 1944, carried structural fixes and four 50 caliber guns. Stall behavior improved but still cost excessive altitude and the airplane gave weak warning before stalling. Engine cooling remained troublesome. By late 1944, piston engine fighters were reaching maturity while jets appeared and the XP-55's performance lagged behind conventional designs. Tragedy struck on the 27th of May 1945 at a war bond air show at Wright Field. During a slow roll, the third prototype lost altitude and crashed, killing pilot William Glasgow and four civilians. The program ended permanently. The XP-55 never entered production, yet it demonstrated how far American designers were willing to push aerodynamics and control concepts under wartime pressure. Its experimental canard layout, ejection propeller safety device, and tricycle landing gear influenced future research, even if not directly copied. Today, the second prototype survives, restored and displayed at the National Air and Space Museum, a reminder that innovation often advances through risky experiments that do not reach combat but still expand aviation knowledge.